everyone, Christian here from CK Wraps. I'm going to show you today how to uh, prepare a car. So we're going to remove some of the trim, door handles, mirrors, that kind of stuff, tail lights, bumper, and uh, the shark fin antenna, which is going to be kind of a hard one to see, but I'll explain it as I go along, because that one is removed from the inside of the vehicle. So to start off, we're going to remove the, wind, the rooftop trim. Super easy on this car, it's the Genesis. A lot of them are like this, they're just clips. That you can get under there with your fingers sometimes, and just pop these guys off. Be, be gentle and make sure you're applying even pressure so that we don't bend this piece of trim. All right, that's one. So we'll do the same to the other side afterwards. I'm gonna show you one side of the vehicle. So for the door handle, we have a plug right here. Most door handles are just like this. What we can use is our plastic trim removal tool. So we can get under there without scratching anything. We just gotta get underneath this little cap and pop it off. Keep it in a safe place. I usually put stuff like this on the floor right here. That way I know where it is. I'm not gonna be really getting in and out of the car. I also have an eight millimeter socket, which I know what this is right here, because I've done lots of them. And we're just gonna reach in there. There's the bolt right there. It's a little hard to see, but it's right there. Easily accessible, but the one thing is with this is that we have to be careful not to drop it in the door. So I have this other tool, which I use to hook around the head of the screw as I, as I pull the screw out. That way I can hold on to it just like that. Okay, so once we do that, we can, if you want to come around here, we can slide this piece out, it's super easy, just like that. What I'm going to do is put the screw back in there so we know where it goes and we don't lose it. Just a few threads. Now for the door handle, super easy. You can do this with one hand or two hands. It just pulls back and out, done. A lot of, a lot of new cars are just like this. Remove these uh, gaskets. All right, we're gonna keep those. Make sure we put them back on afterwards before we put the door handle back on. I've done it lots of times where I've forgotten to put them on first and uh, we have to remove the door handle again and put it back on. All right, so I'm just gonna put these right here. That way I know where everything is. So for the mirror, super easy. This piece comes off just like that. I just pull it, I just squeeze it a little bit and pull it right off. All it does, is sit on the ends of these screws right here. So there's three points right here, it's three screws. What we need to do is fish the wire up so we don't even have to remove the door card. We can pull the foam back slightly and fish up the plug. So the plug is just right here and it has, I know it has enough slack on it. If you have to remove the door card on this car, it's super easy and I'll show you where to do that. Just actually, this will unclip right here. Oh, maybe not. So this has already been this has been tampered with. I can see the there's electrical tape here for whatever reason. So something happened. Not sure. So we kind of got to be a little bit careful. There it is. Okay. So super easy. Push down on the on the pin. Disconnect that. That's done. Now I need to grab a 10 mil. So we have our 10 millimeter socket. That's what these are on all Genesis coupes and on a lot of cars. So I can see that there's a different kind of um, nut right here. So it doesn't match these two, which are the original ones. This is a black one. And so this mirror has been removed at some point. So I'm actually gonna remove that one first. I will, what I'll do is once I get these off, I'm going to thread them back onto the mirror. So that way, again, we don't lose them. But I'll put them on the floor for now. I'm going to disconnect that and do this by hand.
tent in the mirror, I just pull a little bit from the bottom and wiggle it out a little bit, and that just comes right out. So we're done as far as getting the mirror off. That took like two minutes. All right, thread these back on, put the mirror back inside the car, and we're going to remove the window trim next. So what I'm going to do right now is lower the window. That way we have access to the door handle. All right, so for the window, I'm sorry, for the window trim, there's usually one Phillips right here. Come around the other side, I don't know if you can see that. There's one Phillips screw right there. And sometimes one on the other side, actually there isn't on this car. On other cars, there's sometimes one on the front here and one on the back. So once we remove that screw, and it's more of a, I guess it's kind of an anti-theft thing for whatever reason. Um, they're super hard. It's super hard to remove this trim if you don't put the window down because I'm gonna show you why in a second. So again, hold tight on, hold tight with this screw. Make sure you put it in a safe place. And we're gonna thread that back onto this as well. So the reason why I roll the window down also is because we need to get in here and bend that trim outwards, just like that. And it pops right out on a lot of cars. Some, are, some require a little bit more force and then you have to pry gently as you go down but this should basically hooks around and then snags in underneath. So if we pull back on it, it, re it releases that clip on the inside. So that's off. Another piece that was super easy. So I'm gonna take this and thread it back in. It's a really small screw, so we just gotta be careful not to lose it. Okay, put this down the side right here. All right, so we have to, uh, what I like to do is remove this piece right here as well. So on the inside here, there's three, there's three prongs. I'm gonna get the flashlight so you can see. So there's three bits, one here, one here, and one way over here. So again, we take our, our tool, if we can, you might need a smaller version of this. Sometimes you can just pull it with your fingers. Okay, I need a smaller version of that. might be good enough. It's kind of hard to do this with the flashlight in my hand. It's all good. It's okay, I'll get it. There. Okay, hold <laughs> it. I need two hands here so I can hold this straight. There we go, there's one. there. The more difficult one to reach is the one in here, which I won't really be able to see, but I'm going to get it out. If I can. I might have to go from underneath it. It'll be, give me a little bit extra leverage there. There we go. Okay. So as far as this goes, I'm just going to pull it back about there. I like to tuck it in behind here. Those little clips won't fall out of that. It holds it pretty tight. Now this is, these are all Phillips screws. So, and there's Phillips screws all the way down and then there's one plug right here which holds it into place. So, once we remove all the screws, we don't have to worry about it falling as long as that plug is doing its job. I don't use a drill because I find that it can be a little bit uh, too sloppy, so I just do those all by hand. Especially when you're putting these things back, you can actually strip the uh, strip the holes. So we got to be careful because it's it's only plastic when we're 
when we're tightening this back down. So it's always better to put it in by hand or put your drill on a really low setting as far as torque goes. Once I get the last few of these out, I'll show you exactly how this piece comes out. One more after this. All right, and that's all of them. I'm just gonna put that in a nice little pile over there. I'll put them away afterwards. So. There is the plug right here. What we can do is pull down on it a little bit, get this, to re get this to release. And then once that happens, we have to slide this trim back this way because you're gonna see there's a pin here. So this actually slides right over top of that, making sure that everything lines up. So make sure you're not bending this. You have to slide the trim back and out. Okay, so we're gonna put this away. As far as this window trim goes, we don't remove it. This stays right there. All right, so the next thing that we're gonna do, we're gonna do tail lights. I need my 10 mil right here. Tail lights, these on, the, on the, the second generation of the Genesis are 10 millimeter. And then there's a flashlight still. I'll show you. There's a little pad right here. We remove that. And then we have our, we have access to our 10 millimeter nuts. There's four, there should be four. What I do, what I like to do is loosen them a little bit. This one is the one that's most likely to fall because the carpet is slightly in the way. So we gotta be a little bit careful when we remove it. Otherwise, we're going to go digging for it. So I'm just going to hold on to it, place it right there. That one's out. And now I've loosened all the rest. One more up here. And then we're gonna remove the plug, which is super easy also, right here. So the, the way that I'm going about doing this car is very similar with a lot of cars. What I can do now is push on the tail light from the back. If it's hard, sometimes it's hard to remove from the front here, but it's been sitting in there so long, it's kind of seized in there. So I have to just kind of wiggle it a little bit, okay? And now I can just gently, Wiggle it out and pull it out, okay? We're out. We'll do the other one very quickly, just like I did that one. We're gonna thread these back on there a couple of times. And then we're gonna move on to the front bumper. All right. Let's do this one over here. It's not a whole lot to see. I'll just do this quickly here, since I showed you the other side already. Same deal. Okay, is that one? That one. One more after this one. Obviously, prep is a big um, thing when it comes to wrapping a vehicle. We need to you you want to account for prep time when we're quoting for a vehicle wrap. 
stuck in there a little bit just because it's probably never been removed. Okay, so just wiggle it a little bit and that's out. When this goes back in, that tab lines up with this and it slides right into it. So a lot of tail lights are very similar. You can access them through the trunk. They got a few screws and then the wire for the uh, tail light itself. Okay, I will leave these in the trunk because we don't really need to go into the trunk anymore after this. We close that and that's good. Let's move on to the front bumper and the headlights. So I'll explain why I removed the headlights. So when we wrap, I'm going to remove the front bumper just so we can take out these grills and stuff like that. And it makes prep a lot more thorough. I'm going to remove the headlights because when we glass the film over top of this, it's going to contour in and over on its own. And we want it to do that naturally. It makes life a lot easier. Uh, that way we're not stretching in there and trying to fight with the headlight in the way. We remove it completely. It's only a few screws, so we might as well just get it out of the way. So, for this, oh, it's missing, it's missing a screw here. So that, that, that's already loose. Let's see if the other side already has one. There's one there, and it's usually an eight millimeter or a Phillips. This side's already out too, so that's good. What I need to do is remove the air intake duct here and a couple of those screws, which are actually just, those screws are just plastic clips. So, so these, are, these are really finicky. Sometimes they thread, sometimes they don't. So sometimes you just have to pry them out. Be gentle, I just let the weight of this, the screwdriver sit on it, I don't push down. Otherwise, they'll never come out. I'm actually surprised they're all coming out right now is the way they are. Because these threads usually don't work after they, pl they plug them in for whatever reason. All right, they're good. So we're just gonna get these out of the way. You don't have to undo it all the way. All it's doing is opening, pushing back here so that this can now close in. So this can close in. So as soon as we release this, far enough, this will be able to close in and we can slide it out. Once we push this in, these prongs spread out and it locks it in place. Okay, I'm gonna go put this in my sorting box right now. Hold on a second. All right, intake off, easy. He already has an aftermarket intake on here. So there wasn't anything else to disconnect. Uh, for the most part, you don't have to worry about any of this stuff actually, so it just stays as is. What I'm going to do right now is make sure there's no splash guard underneath that it's connected to, which it is. So we have similar, the similar screws that were on top here, we have, looks like two, one, two on the bottom. Okay. So we're gonna do the same thing. And these are gonna be, yeah, this is more finicky for sure. Doesn't wanna come out, so I'm gonna have to pry it out. And I'm going to remove this whole bumper right now in like two minutes. Here we go. I can even just pull it out with my fingers. They don't really do much. All, they do, all they're doing is holding the splash guard in place. And it doesn't really give a lot of support for the bumper at all or anything like that. Okay, so there's two there. I'm going to put these in my sort box also. So just to show you what I use to sort out screws and bolts and stuff like that. So we have, we have either driver's side or passenger side, whatever's labeled, driver's side, passenger side. I keep everything symmetrical for the most part. I do have to clean it out. Um, I do have to clean it out a bit. There's a bunch of screws in there that are excess just from me doing work around the shop. And I just throw them in there because it's good to have extras. But yeah, so I label it driver's side, passenger side, and that's it. The bumper is ready to come off and I'm gonna show you how to do that. So for the most part, most bumpers, are just like that. There's gonna be some clips and screws along the top. There's gonna to be a couple in here. Sometimes the splash guard is held to the bumper itself. Sometimes there's one here. Sometimes there's one here and one in here. And then when it comes to removing this, you kind of just have to pull. It's, it's just clipped in there after that. So underneath, make sure the splash guard's removed also that it's released from the bumper. That way we can pull this bumper off. So if you wanna come over here just quickly, I'm gonna show you one more thing that's also holding this bumper on. Right here, we have these two little circle things. I'm not, they're just more for uh, positioning the bumper in its, in its actual place. So we have to actually lift it up over that little circle thing. 
and over that one as well. That way, we're good to go. So it's up, and now I can show you how to remove the bumper. So I'm gonna get my mat set up. All right, so right here, what I'm gonna do is pull. And see, I'm gonna put even pressure like that, okay? Like nothing's broken, don't worry about snaps. If you hear something fall, then yes, you did break something. Okay, so I'm gonna do now do the other side. We wanna make sure that we're not gonna drop the bumper. So sometimes I'll lean against it a little bit, okay? Just stuck over here. Should be good. We're stuck over the latch, okay? And that's it. There's no fog lights or anything to disconnect. On, on cars with fog lights, you'd want to disconnect those or side markers and stuff like that. So you'd only want to remove the bumper about this far out and then disconnect those. Or if you can reach those from underneath or in the fender well, you can do that as well. So we'll put this down right here. And we're gonna remove the headlights. Well, these are really easy. There's three screws, or two, two I believe. Two on top here, but you have to remove the bumper to be able to do it. Again, this is 10 millimeter. I'll put those screws just right there for now. We're gonna slide it out a little bit. It's actually clipped on top just slightly, so you have to lift that tab. There we go. Now we'll wanna disconnect this. You can, you can disconnect this before, it's just a little bit easier once you pull it out, but you can reach in behind there and do it. I'm gonna put this headlight down here. And what I can do is take these two screws and just thread them in a little bit. That way we know where they go and what they're for. Again, same thing with this guy over here. All right. So again, I'm just going to grab it, pull it out. Be careful. You don't want to drop it, they're expensive. I'm going to put this down on the mat also. And then just thread these guys back in here. So most of this car is already prepped uh, as far as dismantling goes. We just have the other side to do with the mirror, the door handle, and the, and the trim across the roof. And the uh, window trim across the bottom. All right. Uh, there is the gas cap, which is Kind of difficult actually it's not it's not a fun one so for the gas cap we have this guy right here it's this little fly little fly nut we got to take that off put it in a safe place i usually put it in the trunk for now which i'm going to open all right gas cap we have to remove, what I want to do is remove this from the lid. There we go, I just pushed on the back. I kind of squeezed that together. We're gonna undo this and get it out of the way because we need to access these four screws. What I'm going to do before we do anything is I'm gonna plug that with a rag. Okay, so. We don't want anything falling in there. This is pretty typical with engine work. We usually plug up engine components and stuff like that when you're doing head work on the engine. So we're gonna plug that up so we don't drop a screw in there. Also the fumes, we wanna make sure that we're not letting all the fumes out of here also, which are harmful. So this is 10 millimeters again. And there's four of them. And then, once we get these four screws out, there's a backing plate, and then we can remove the, this entire assembly. 
So on, I'll explain this, on European cars, gas lids, they usually, there's a little tab and, and there's a little spot somewhere underneath here or here, and you can slide a flathead screwdriver in there, pry that tab just very gently and slide the entire cap off. The cap's off then, it's super easy. These, some cars are like this where we have to remove the entire assembly. Again, yeah, this is not required to, do, to remove stuff like this. We do it because we want to be thorough, and that's the important thing. So this backing plate here, I need a little hook to grab it, so I'm going to use the tool that I was using before. And we're just going to hook in behind it. Okay. Now this little backing plate, isn't normally on all cars, it's on some cars. As you go along, you're gonna see kind of what you need to do. It's, it's everything is, uh, is a process. So there's one step before the next step before the next step. And as you see, as you start removing things, you'll see kind of what the next step is. Just be sure not to overlook anything. So if we overlook something, then we can cause a lot of damage. So we wanna make sure that you're being thorough and looking around and, and having a good examination of what it is that you need to do. Sometimes you have to pry things a little bit and move them a little bit just so you can see a little bit better. And I'll explain kind of how I figured out how to remove this, this um, gas cap here. So one thing that we have to be careful of is that we don't snap this pin off when we're removing this gas cap. It has to push in at some point. Okay, this will have to push in that when we slide this entire piece out. Another thing we have to be careful of is sometimes these come out really easy, sometimes they are really a huge pain to take out. So there's clips on the inside under here and if I pry, see I just pried it out with my fingers, it gives me enough that I can see the actual clip. And if I can see the clip that means I know where to stick the tool so I can push down on the clip. Sometimes I can actually just do these with my hand. It won't let me. Okay, let's go around the bottom. Or is it too tight? See, this is just kind of one of those things where you gotta work it, you gotta figure it out what way works best. These all sit a little bit differently on these cars. So I never know really what I'm getting into. I know that clip is right around here and it's hard to see, but I'll show you afterwards. Can't quite get it. I need the flashlight. It's in the trunk, I think. So this tool set, this plastic tool set you can buy on Amazon, There's, it's super useful. Really just trying to find that clip. I see it, but it's not wanting to push down. My fingers are starting to hurt. This is the fun part. So this, this toolkit, this plastic toolkit was only 12 bucks. So if you damage something or whatever, I mean, it's pretty cheap. You don't have to uh, um, worry about breaking something. Just, it's, I feel like giving. I'm just trying to get it. Sorry, Brace, bear with me here.
think I need a more rigid one. All right, so this one has a slight bend on it. Just gonna see if I can pop it from the bottom here. When we try one way, it's not going, we try another way. So right now I only have one clip off. I don't think it likes that way. Well, it looks like it's out. Okay, we're gonna go from the bottom now. Can't do it from the top. I'm gonna get one more tool so I can help keep it like that instead of using my fingers. And this will help keep a bit of tension on it. It's okay, I'm just gonna find the sweet spot. So again, once we get to this point, we have to be careful that we're lifting this up and over. Do I have the hook? What do I do with it? this rubber seal is getting right now it's getting snagged there we go okay now if we break something we always it's liability so if we do break something then we have to replace it okay, so I feel it coming now that's one clip Just popped out. That's the other one. Okay, now we're getting somewhere. Okay. So now we have to um, scoop this, so you can see. So we have to scoop this rubber seal up and over the gas tank itself. Okay, so we're gonna, as we pull up, we have to get this around here, being gentle. This is, this is a fun one, so we got it though. I'm just gonna remove the rag because there's nothing to really drop down the gas tank right now. There's no screws or anything. Okay, we're almost there. It's gonna slide a little bit towards me. Just have to lift the seal a little bit more here. Now it's just gonna pull out and it's out, okay? Now that I've released the gas cap itself, I'm gonna put that gas cap back in there. So no more rag and leave it just like that. I'll put the entire gas tank and all the screws, sorry, the gas lid and all the screws in the trunk and leave it all there. So as far as prep goes, we've done most of it. Um, there's, there's a couple of screws behind here which we'll remove. You just gotta get out of them. It's the same plastic screws that are um, that hold the fender liner in, or sorry, the, uh, the liner underneath the bumper in and the top underneath the hood. So it's the same plastic screws. We can just pop those guys out. There's one, there's one or two over here. There's two over here also. Because we're going to have to wrap over this to cover all the white. And then we're going to put the screws back. That way everything looks mint. Okay. And 
there's also, I believe it's a Phillips. So to release the rear bumper, I like to release it by removing these two screws. It's a Phillips or, or a 10 mil, just on the top side right here. What, what we can do now, actually, and then there's a Phillips here. But what we'll be able to do is we'll be able to pop this out all the way down to here and then clean in there really nicely. Not really so much of a big deal um, as far as wrapping goes. It's, it's extremely tight fit, so there's probably going to be some friction issues between the rear bumper and the rear quarter panel if we put too much film in there, so we're going to have to trim it out really nicely. Same deal here. the screw just goes straight up and it's near the end so there's one more Phillips there and one more Phillips here I need a different tool to get in there because it's a really tight squeeze uh, once we remove those two screws we'll be able to swing out the bumper and clean in there really nicely uh, and that's pretty much it guys so we'll remove the rear emblem and uh, oh yeah the shark fin antenna but I'll I can do a separate video on the shark fin antenna this this one's getting kind of long I don't know how long it's been yet, but look at what we've done. Look how much we've accomplished in dismantling the vehicle. So we've, we've accomplished a lot. We've gotten a lot of the, um, a lot of the stuff removed. Now we're going to have to prep it with uh, isopropyl alcohol, blow away all the contaminants with the compressor is what I always like to do, and uh, start masking things off like around the window, opposite panels and stuff like that, and then we're going to get to wrapping. So anyways, hope you enjoyed that video. If you want to see more, I'll start trying to do some prep videos and uh, dismantling and stuff like that. Uh, check it out. I'll post them all up and I'll start posting up some videos on how to wrap this car again. And I'm using a more normal film because we're using a matte metallic black. It's a brand new color that's not even out yet. It'll be just a couple of weeks out still. Uh, so yeah, so it's going to be really cool to see it. I'm excited for it and uh, it's going to look good. So anyways, take care everyone. Thanks for following.